Um, so the topic I'm going to talk about today is uh, scalable RISC-V architecture. So why the scalability is important? Because uh, this is relative to this uh, digital transformation we actually experience now. So what is that? Um, so it, before I dive into tensor and CPU and then AI architecture, so let's take the moment of the time, right? Recognize this is a very remarkable era in the human history. Right? So what we actually see today is that um, maybe a hundred, a couple hundred years later, um, people were actually looking back this period of the time, right? And then look at this as a new industrial revolution. Um, this revolution is characterized by the human intellect replaced by machine intelligence, right? The first industrial revolution is, is recognized by the human labor is replaced by the machine. So this is just how significant this era is. So one special thing about AI, what it can bring you is actually this called personalization, right? Which cannot be achieved before. So through the personalization, AI can actually customize everything for you, right? From your personal medicine to afford your kids with a personalized, you know, affordable education for you. However, this kind of personalization requires huge amount of computation. And that's why most of people you're here today talking about AI, right? Because this insatisfiable personalization requires a huge amount of computation power. So how do we end up to today, right? So how we actually arrive to this historical juncture is through this transistor event meaning Right. On 1947, and there's a two parallel threads that actually being evolving. Right, one is the personalized connectivity driven by the internet, and then then you have the 3G connectivity on year 2000, and then the next one will be personalized computation. Right, going from mainframe computer to personal computer, all the way to the Apple actually inventing the mobile computing, and that's where the juncture of the time through the personal connectivity you have very powerful computation associated with you every day, everywhere you go, right? And then that effect is actually generate this huge amount of data, right? Collected about your daily activity. In 2010, there's a called gold mining on the data, which is called data mining, concepts actually emerging, and that's driving the neural network development on 2012. And that, after that period of the time, the air computation just accelerate, the model development accelerate, and until the chat GPT today, you are seeing. So this is a picture coming from OpenAI, right? It tells you that on 2012, the AI model is accelerate its computation double every 2.5 months, right? It's, if it's, it's accelerating in a such a way that Given the semiconductor advancement, right, there's no way to actually meet this demand because more laws saying that you can double your transistor every two years and maybe three years now, right? So there's a no way you actually can meet in this computation demand just by through the technology. And that's why we're thinking about architecture, right? How to solve this problem is very, very important. And then the other thing actually developing is that model size is growing exponentially, right? So GPT-3 is 300 billion parameter, ChatGPT4 is rumored to be 4 trillion parameter. And then coupled with the in huge amount of data being generated today, right? Statistics show that 2.2 times 10 to the 18 number of the buy being generated every day. So this two powerful events happen, right? Acceleration of the AI model computation requirement and also huge amount of data generated every day they colliding together and generate this perfect stone for the new invention on the AI computation hardware. So uh, we believe, right, Tensor believe is that you have to solve pr this problem. You cannot solve this problem by sending all the data to data center. You have to solve this problem distributedly. That's mean you have to solve the computation by doing AI everywhere, right? So, why you define this architecture, you, are, you want to be scalable so that it can be applied to 
on the client side, on the edge side, and all the way to data center using one architecture to solve that problem. Because you actually enable you have a consistent software model while there's a minor change in there. And so why the risk file is important from that point? Because risk file give you a standardization through the ISA semantics, right? So you have standardized tool, tool chain to do that. While the extension, you can customize, you can do whatever you want, give you that flexibility on the customization, which is required for solving this AI everywhere architecture problem. So TensorTorrent, right? So founded 2016, the mission is actually building the AI you know, processor, right? So um, our CEO currently is uh, Jim Keller. So Jim Keller has been Apple, right? Digital Alpha processor, right? And then Tesla, and also Intel, AMD, right? So impeccable rec record of our industrial achievement. So we already have two products, right? So great score and one hole in production. We are working on the third tape out, right? So I'm, I'm actually joined the company two and a half years ago, tried to build this high performance risk by processor, right? To make a heterogeneous computation environment. So this is our architecture, right? So the first two generation, you can see that the first generation is more like um, uh, proof of a concept chip, right? So using the PCIe, you can see the regular structure in there is called 10 six core, right? And then you're building with a knock and you're building a one chip, right? With a lot of uh, AI computation. The second generation, we start looking at the scalability, right? Which is important for the high performance computing and data center compute because you can use the same element to do, um, to, to scale out and then doing, solving a bigger problem. And third generation is the black hole we're doing heterogeneous. Because heterogeneous is using for solving the problem which on foreseeable future if your AI accelerator has been designed for specific algorithm and you don't have a way to fall back into, right? And then the third generation now we are, I'm actually working on leading the definition is actually the chiplet, right, architecture. This is another level about scalability, right? Because the problem we are solving need to be everywhere. Sorry, this is all I keep touching it. You, you need to be everywhere. So this scalability make you a composable system, right? To solving different kind of problem. And this is our uh, 10 6 element. You can see that there's actually a five embedded CPU in there, right? You can see the CPU is using risc CPU. This is the flexibility we talk about using the risc right? And you issue the extension instruction to our AI accelerator, right? So each of the CPU has a particular responsibility in there. And then this tiny element in there is actually the fundamental of the building element for the AI accelerator. And you can replicate it many, many times, right? To building the computation device, which you are the application targeting for. So this is the scalability of our AI architecture. And then you can see that all systems also scale, right? We're using Ethernet, talking to the Rocky, right? We can build in this 32, you know, car machine, right? Solving the data center training problem by using to the Ethernet. So scalability, again, is important. And then you can see the strategy is that from the IP perspective, right? Um, so our partner can requesting the smaller IP, composing it together and building the exactly form factor and PPA requirement for their application. They can, they can also using our chip that, right, using a composable element, building the system required for their PPA. And then system chip that can also further in scaling out using the Ethernet technology. And we have the system scalability on the scale of system on the system as well. So we talk about scalability of a hardware, but also software is also scalable, right? So the software has to enable you to equip with the functionality that actually can take the PyTorch, translate into implementation, right? Let it out in the computation device all the way one, from one single 10 six core to multi-thousand chip system, right? So this is the software stack. Uh, effort try to match in that strategy of the scalability. So we talk about the scalability of our AI solution and how about the CPU, right? So CPU is also an important part of the compute because a lot of general compute in any system you are looking at, CPU is actually serving a foundation to booting operating system. 
but in AI field, CPU is also serving as a pre-processing, post-processing computation device, but also using as a way to run the application, which AI is not doing well, right? So it's really a powerful backup system for any AI algorithm not executing the metric multiplication engine. So our high-performance CPU, which is on the right, right, so um, on your right-hand side, is actually your AY decode machine. It's designed for competing with the AMD Zen 5, right? It's a really high-performance server-grade processor. So at the same time, we actually make sure that this design can parameterize, right, to support 6Y, 4Y, 3Y, D Y decode machine, right? To this way, we also have a scalable RISC-V roadmap can companion with our AI processor, right? for different level of PPA application. Um, we also building a CPU chip that, right? Each chip that in this here is actually a 30 core system, right? High performance CPU core system. And you can compose them together to build like 30 core server, 64 core server, 96 core server, or 120 core high end server. And this can be serving a foundation associated with the AI chip that, which I'm gonna show here, right? a heterogeneous system, right? So you can have a CPU chip that, AI chip that, and a memory chip that, and an IO chip that. And then give you an example about the composability on the uh, CPU chip that system, right? So you can have CPU high-end server, right, composed with DDR channel. Then I say, okay, the memory bandwidth is not enough. Let's go to HBN. And I just replace the memory controller, right, with the HBN controller. Then I have a high-end system for the server. Right, this is just tell you the scalability and composability of the our system, chip that system as well. So I will, in the following couple of slides, I'm gonna give you an example where our you know application is right for using our technology. Like our um, D2, right, uh, chip that chip, you know, can be using in the um, wearable system, which require extremely low power. And then we can also go to the mobile market, which require big or little, right, configuration. So we have high-ended server-grade processor can be implemented as a bigger core in the mobile compute system. We also have a medium core system can be used as a low power efficient implementation for the uh, mobile system. And then for the car, right, so we can have using our IP, right, using L2, L4, you know, inference design. We can also using the chip that the customer can choosing our chip that and put in their associate SOC function on the other chip, right? Compose a car self-driving system for themselves. So the strategy is actually using the IP, you know, scalable IP and also scalable chip system enable us to building a wide variety of system based on the car requirement. And then we can also using our chip, right, to build in. Uh, networking, you know, um, um, our storage server and also using for the DPU, right? So we have a lot of customers asking for this kind of configuration as well. Video codec machine, right, it's associated with the CPU server and with the uh, video encoding and decoding, right, transcoding design as a video co codec market, right? So you just tell you like, this scalable strategy worked really well to all kinds of application and fulfill our requirement for the computation everywhere for AI, right? So this is just give you a couple of examples to demonstrate that, you know, um, the powerfulness of the architecture. So in summary, right, so what I, what I actually presented here is our complete strategy, right? So we believe AI, right, the computation has to happen all the way from client, age device to data center. It's impossible to solve this problem by funneling all the data information to the data center to create an architecture like that. So you need a computation, right? Efficiently execute at the age, you know, and then at a high performance requirement to saving the time computation at the data center. And our architecture goal actually fulfill that. So repeat that again, right? So Tensor will offer you scalable technology, right? And then AI is a scalable, CPU is a scalable, and our chip lab system is a scalable. So this complete strategy really helping you to create in computation 
everywhere depending on where you want to land your application is. Right? So that, that's my talk, yeah. Thank you very much.